Hi angels, welcome back to my channel. How's everyone doing? How's everyone feeling? I just wanna say this video has been highly, highly requested since my channel has honestly been into existence. And that's been over a year now that I've been on YouTube. So wow, <laughs> shout out to me. And here we are now, over 100,000 subscribers and continuing to grow the A-team. Nonetheless, make sure that you guys are following me on Instagram, yes, which will be right here. I want you to keep up with me on there. I do post a lot in my stories and things of that nature. And also, do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not already and turn on your post notifications so that you're notified every single time that I post. I don't wanna waste any more time. Let's jump right into this video. So as you guys can see from the title, this video is about where to meet affluent men, the New York edition. Now I live in New York. For those of you that don't know that I do, I do live in New York. I was only able to comprise a list of places that I've been at and places that I've heard were also really, really good. So none of these places are in any particular order. So I do want to state as a disclaimer that I have not attended every single place on this list, but I have attended many of them and I've also heard great things about the ones that I have not attended as of yet. In addition to that, I know that when it comes to meeting, you know, affluent men, I get so many questions. Aisha, like, where do I go? I have nowhere to look. I live in a town where there are no places like that. Well, this is the video for you. It is finally here. So firstly, I want to say that as I was researching this topic, a lot of these suggestions that I would see are like, go to this membership club, go to this polo club, or, you know, go to this gala, this charity event, or, you know, this uh, racetrack sort of thing. And obviously those are true things. However, for, you know, the average person, including myself, how do you gain access to those places? You know, not many of us have access to those types of places, nor may we know the right people possibly to even give us access to those types of places. So this is why the list that I made are comprised of hotels, bars, and also restaurants. That way it's easy access for anyone to, you know, go to, and it's very much attainable. Before we jump into the exact places, there are a couple tips that I wanted to share with you, Angel. So the first three tips that I'm gonna be giving is in regards to before you're choosing a place. So my number one tip is Google the upscale places that are in your city or in your town or in the surrounding town by you. And when you Yelp them, you can see the ratings, you can see what attire to wear, you can see the type of food that they have, pictures of the food that they have, Number two, when you select a place, check their website. This is something that I honestly kind of learned on my own, that when you check the website, you can see if they have any sort of events like live bands or maybe a car show. There's going to be a lot of guys there if there's a car show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also on Google, you can see the prime time of where to go to certain places. I know, for instance, for me in New York, this isn't necessarily the time, but this is the day to go. So on a Thursday, I know that a lot of places that are very upscale, they turn into sort of loungy, sort of, you know, kind of dancing and, you know, drinking type of places. And that's on Thursday night. So Thursday night is a big night uh, by me in New York to go out. And also it's kind of an early night as well. Not many people go out all the time till 3 a.m. like on a Thursday. Sometimes the night will end around, you know, midnight or maybe like 1 a.m., maybe 2 or something like that. My tip number three is when you are going to a restaurant, you need to befriend the host, the bartender. I don't know, even the person that manages the place, if you honestly can. Um, or even introduce yourself to the owner if they're there. A lot of the times, in, from what I've seen, a lot of the owners, a lot of the times are actually in the restaurants, especially on a hot spot night. So for instance, for me, that would be on a Thursday. There was a new uh, place that opened up by me and the owner was actually there on a Thursday night. So if you can introduce yourself, it wouldn't really be strange because they own the place and you're someone that's attending. So 
you would want to befriend them. But mainly you would want to befriend the bartender or the host person there because if you get to know them on a first name basis, as well as them getting to know you on a first name basis, that makes them more familiar with you. And that way, when you come in, you have that relationship with them already. So if you ever want to, you know, book a reservation or something like that, sometimes they might let you, you know, slip on by ahead of certain people. <laughs> I'm just being honest. They honestly really do do things like this. Um, I've seen it, especially with men too, that they'll come in, they'll be on a date and there'll be so many people there, but they get seated, you know, faster and you don't really know why, but like, if you know, you know, that sort of thing. So that's a major tip. And I can honestly say that being around social people and being a social person myself, this is something that I picked up on that is major. I study how, you know, people around me like, oh my God, how does this person know so many people? And I realize what they do. They are very friendly and social with the people that actually work in that establishment. So that is very, very important. So next we're going to move on to tips before you actually attend the place of your choice. You want to smell good because when you smell good, you know, it's like an experience for someone. They're going to remember you by how you smell. You're more likely to be memorable by how well you smell. And also on top of that, it's very alluring and, you know, sexy. Second, you want to select an outfit that is, you know, appropriate for that setting. I understand people do like to wear whatever they want, which is completely fine. But it's very easy to tell, you know, who hasn't really been in certain places because of how they dress. It's just something that you notice having a trained eye where you can tell where someone just maybe wearing something that is just too much or inappropriate. And when I say inappropriate, I don't even necessarily mean too short or, or something is being exposed, but I just mean in the sense of why are you wearing that? Why? Like, I, just, I really don't understand that sort of thing. You don't wanna be that person where it's just like, why? why you don't want to be that person so also i want to mention that there needs to be a balance in your outfit so if you choose to you know show a little bit of cleavage you want to make sure that you're not showing all of your legs in like a super mini skirt or something like that you know you want to do everything very tastefully and balance balance is key and lastly my tip for when you arrive at the place of your choice is if you are going with a friend, which more than likely you are, a lot of the times it's very intimidating for guys to approach a big group of women. So if you are going with a friend, let's say you go with one friend, you wanna make sure that you're either sitting a seat away from your friend or you wanna make sure that both of the seats that are next to you and your friend are both empty. That way a guy can talk to you and then a guy can also talk to your friend and you guys are still able to sit next to one another. I also want to add that make sure that you order at least one drink. Of course, it doesn't have to be alcohol. As you guys know, I don't drink. So you can order a mocktail, you can order a soda, or you can actually order a cocktail of your choice. That way, when you're in conversation with someone, when someone comes up to you, they can just order you another of whatever it is that you're having. But you don't want to sit there empty handed or in your phone texting or whatever the case is, you wanna make sure that you're there and you look presentable and you look approachable. So now we are going to finally get into the list of where to meet affluent guys. This list is in no particular order guys, by the way, and I really do wanna kinda spit it out. All of the places that I'm mentioning, do not worry, will be in the uh, description box below or it will be a pinned comment so do not worry if you don't know how to spell a place or you don't know what I just said just check the pinned comment or the description box so firstly we're gonna do hotels the first hotel that I think is absolutely amazing is the Ritz Carlton Hotel I mean classic old and faithful if you like anything opulent and luxurious you know about the Ritz Carlton and yes there is one in New York next is also the Garden City Hotel so this is actually out by me and I really do like that hotel. I actually ate at a place there called the Salt Room, I believe, and they have amazing food. And I really actually do like the decor. It feels very comfy, but yet very, very classy. The Baccarat Hotel. I love anything Baccarat because um, Baccarat Rouge 540. I mean, if you know, you know, if you know me, you know, okay? The Nomad Hotel. So the Nomad Hotel, I actually visited there a couple of times and I really did like it. There is a separate bar part and then there's also another bar there's like three different rooms there actually. And nonetheless, I would definitely check it out. The Plaza Hotel, I really, really do like the Plaza Hotel a lot. It's very 
princessy type of vibes. And they actually, fun fact, do etiquette classes there. I don't remember what the name of the etiquette classes uh, are, but it starts with a B, but I don't even remember it, so I don't want to butcher the name, but it's a very, very nice hotel. Very nice and upscale. The Gansevert Hotel. The Gansevert Hotel, I would say, is more of a mixed crowd of young and, you know, a little older, but I do know that a lot of young people do go there because they do have some places that are very, you know, party-like there uh, at night and especially on the weekends, but nonetheless, it's more, I would say, of a uh, more modern sort of vibe at the Gansevert Hotel, so if that's more of your type of vibe, then I would definitely go visit there. The Addition Hotels. I actually went there recently, and I really did like it. I went to a restaurant there, and I really, really liked the ambiance of the restaurant, and it was very green, and I was actually there. If you guys check my Instagram, <laughs> that's why you should follow me on Instagram, because uh, I have a photo there of me being in one of the restaurants and it was so beautiful. I loved it. I heard that it's 70% real plants in that place that they, a private company like sells it exclusively to them. Yeah. And also actually fun fact, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but when you go to a lot of these uh, expensive hotels or maybe also hotels in general, I don't know, but all the upscale ones that I like to go to, they have their own personal scent and... <laughs> Here's a good extra tip for you angels. At the Addition Hotel, they, they have a scent that smells really, really good. And apparently it's from this place in the city called Le Labo. I'm also going to link uh, the website to Le Labo as well, where they actually specialize in perfumes. But each hotel I notice has like a signature scent. So I know that theirs is from Le Labo. The Chatwall Hotel. I've never been to the Chatwall Hotel, but it is so luxury there. Oh my gosh, I need to visit that place. So that is upscale, 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 upscale. <laughs> the St. Regis uh, Hotel in New York. Um, I don't know if not many people knew that there was a St. Regis in New York, but yeah, there is. And these are just, this is a old and faithful hotel. I mean, you know, the St. Regis, absolutely gorgeous. The Four Seasons as well. You can't go wrong with the Four Seasons. So now we're going to jump right on into restaurants. And the first place that I'm going to say is called Daniel. And it is a gorgeous place. Absolute gorgeous ambiance. I really, really do think that you guys should visit there. Next, I wasn't going to put this in here, but I figured, uh, whatever. You know, Tao, Lavo, if you're from New York, you kind of know those places. They're very, uh, I would say, a little bit more nouveau riche places, um, a bit more of a younger crowd. Of course, there are older people that do attend there, but it's more of a very party, party place, um, at least what it's known for. They're more known for party type of events or nights. I personally do not really care for the food at Tao or Lavo, and I have... Uh, had dinner at both places. They are also pretty pricey in terms of buying a table, um, you know, to like, you know, have a section and just like party with people. It is pretty pricey and I don't really think that it's that great. Uh, but if you kind of want to experiment with that or experience that, then why not? Next, I'm going to say Kima, which is also in Long Island. And or I don't remember specifically where it is, Long Island, Roslyn, Long Island. And I really do like it in there. They have Greek Mediterranean style food, really good uh, lemon potatoes. The decor in there is all, you know, very white and it's a very cute place. It's not really that big. It does tend to get very crowded. For instance, on a Thursday night, it does get very, very crowded there. And it's not really the biggest type of place, but they do have great food. And I definitely would visit there as well. Blackstone, which is also located in Long Island. I don't know if there are any other locations, but Blackstone is a steakhouse. Before I went vegan, I have gone there a couple times. I've even gone there, honestly, after when, when I was vegan too, but I don't really have many options there because it is a steakhouse. So if you do like steak and seafood, then that's a great option. Peter Luger's is another steakhouse. I don't know if you guys are noticing a theme here, but a lot of, you know, affluent men um, of course, not all of them, but a lot of them do go to a lot of, you know, steakhouses and seafood places. Those types of places are where they do go to eat a lot more often. So next is 11 Madison Park. And I've never been here personally, but huh, so gorgeous on the website. I heard so many amazing things about this place. So 
I definitely want to check it out. Next is Cipriani, or Cipriani, I should say. Old and faithful Italian place. Definitely has amazing food there. Another place I would say is Cipollini. Cipollini is located in Americana, Manhasset. There's also another place that I do like to eat over there because there's only two restaurants, really, which is Cipollini and Toku. And Toku is more Asian fusion style, and Cipollini is Italian. In the city, Del Frisco's is very, very pricey, actually. I believe it is a steakhouse. One of my friends told me about it to go, so I think that's definitely a really good option. Gramercy Tavern is also a really, really good place that I've heard about, but I've never personally been there myself. And lastly, for restaurants, I'm going to say is Gotham, which is like an American-style upscale restaurant. Sometimes not everyone has the same taste or, you know, diet, of course. So sometimes people don't really like, you know, maybe a French restaurant or maybe like a specifically a seafood restaurant or they may have allergies, whatever the case is. So it's always great to have an option for an American style upscale restaurant. And lastly, we are going to talk about bars. That sounds funny. <laughs> anyway, so the first place I'm going to say is the Office NYC, and that's actually located in the Mandarin Oriental. So fun fact, if you go to any sort of upscale hotel or anything, there are multiple upscale restaurants and bars that are actually located inside of these hotels. So there are multiple different places to explore in these types of really, really upscale establishments. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to butcher the name of this. I, I, I really don't know how to pronounce it, but it's called Bemelman's. <laughs> it's called Bemelman's, I think. Bar, a really beautiful place that I visited is called The Floor Room. The Floor Room is actually located in the Moxie Chelsea Hotel, and there are multiple different places in there, which I really, really like. Now, in The Floor Room, I actually went there for my best friend's birthday, and they have like floor to ceiling windows and you can kind of see the skyline. I really enjoyed the decor and the ambiance of the place. So I definitely really think that's a really actually cool place to, you know, go out with your friends. If you want to just go on a night out, we went on a Saturday and it was so nice and I really, really loved it. And they also, they have dining places as well, which leads me to my next place, which is a Feroce Cafe, which is also located in the Moxie Chelsea Hotel as well. So definitely check out those places. Bar Wayo is a really, really nice upscale bar. Yes, even on the website, you can see from the pictures that everything looks so amazing and very, very classy. I definitely don't think I pronounced that properly because there is an accent or some sort of thing on the O, but uh, that's just how I'm gonna pronounce it for right now. Also, there's a place called Dear Irving on Hudson, and I've heard really, really good things about this place, so I definitely want to visit. And lastly, I'm going to say the Rose Bar, which is actually located in the Gramercy Hotel. So that place has a lot of amazing reviews, the Rose Bar, so I would definitely absolutely check that out. Actually, for my best friend's birthday, we were going to either go to the Fleur Room or the Rose Bar, but we checked out the Fleur Room first. So we liked it so much that we actually didn't even end up checking out the Rose Bar. But I heard that they're pretty similar in terms of the ambiance of the place. So that's definitely something to consider if you guys want, you know, a place that you can go out as well as have options to dine in as well because they are located in hotels. So that is the end of this video, guys. Let me know if you are going to be visiting any of these places. If you are in New York, these are a whole bunch of places that you can visit as well. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what video you guys would like to see next in the comment section below. I really want to do more topics on the affluent lifestyle and things of that nature, you know, getting back to my roots. So let me know what topics and suggestions you guys have. And with that being said, do not forget that I love you and God loves you. And I will see you beautiful angels in my next video. Mwah.